Okay, so good to see you. Boy, I'll tell you, I love that thing you did. So good, Don. We can finally get together and everything. Yeah, and it was so you. good. That I think we did a black theater. We're going to talk a black uh, national theater. We're going to talk about that in Libya. And in the audience, welcome very, very much to Conversations, the guest for two hours. This is the first of a two-hour proposition here with uh, Don DeBar. And Don DeBar, I had him down as a public intellectual. He's been very involved with WBAI. He did the morning news, I think, on a regular basis with that radio station across the country. Mm -hmm. And he's a progressive, in the best sense of the word. He's an intellectual. And he's also been to Libya, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And uh, he's got a very interesting story. So, Don, welcome very, very much to Conversation. Thank you, Harold. Thank you very much. This is going to be the Don DeBauer two-hour special, oh as it goodness. is. We're going to be talking about Don DeBauer the whole while. But could you share, the, just for we wait in, uh, share your, your uh, where you were born and raised, educated, a little of that to wait in. And then we'll get talking about the human condition, political realities, and then also we'll get around to talking a good deal about the country of Libya and what's going on. But your own background, born and raised, educated. Libya. Okay. I was born in Ogden, Utah uh, uh -huh. in the uh, mid-1950s. My father In was, Ogden? Mm -hmm. my That's father the was State in University? The Air Force. No, my father was in the Air Force. I'm just saying the State University of, uh, of uh, Utah was there. I taught there for a year at Did Ogden. Really? In the Wasatch Mountains? Uh-huh. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. country. I don't remember. I oh, been okay. Back we were there. Um, my dad was in the Air Force, uh -huh. uh, 1952 to 1956, I think. Okay. And um, I was born uh, on Hill Air Force Base, uh -huh. which was the uh, base he was situated at. Okay. Um, and we came back here when I was two years old. My parents were both from Westchester County. My dad from Austin, and my mother from North Tarrytown. Uh huh. And um, so we came back. Uh, with then my uh, young brother, younger brother Joe, and my uh, sister Joni, um, and I, we lived in Ossining for uh, up until I started kindergarten. We lived in Irvington then, mm -hmm. um, then uh, moved to Ossining after fifth grade, um, and I've been around from there, but back to Ossining in the mid '80s and there ever since. Yeah. Okay. Very good. A family setting. Your dad, he was military, and your mother. Only for my, my it, father. Only was for uh, four years. Oh, uh, oh just you know, a four-year term. Where, yeah. Was it an intellectually encouraging environment and so forth? The family setting. My or? parents. Yeah. My mother went to uh, uh, Buffalo Teachers College mm -hmm. uh, to be an art teacher. Yeah. Uh, she ended up uh, being a housewife and a working housewife, um, and uh, doing substitute teaching and stuff. But she. Uh, particularly um, encouraged me to uh, learn to read when I was very young. My father also, uh, mm -hmm. when I was three and a half, I could read the newspaper and wow. stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. they had me reading comics and yeah. things. And uh, then they bought uh, a set of World Book encyclopedias for uh, my brother and I when I was four. Uh -huh. uh, I would say by the time I was six, I finished them. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> That's a lot of reading. It was, uh, we went yeah. through, you know, all, what was it, uh, 31. Uh, uh, volumes of it or whatever. We, and, we had uh, when I was young. We had the Britannica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I went to um, uh, to uh, Catholic school okay. through uh, ninth grade in Westchester County, and then I went to Austin High School uh, uh -huh. through uh, that period, and then I took a year off from everything and worked uh, with my dad um, after high school, and then sort of did catch as catch can with school at Mercy College, uh -huh. uh, SUNY, and stuff. Uh -huh. um, I, in what fields did you try to go? That's when you uh, political, political science. Political yeah, science. I've right, been interested right, in politics yeah. since I was young. Uh -huh. uh, my grandfather on my mother's side was uh, active in politics in Westchester. Uh -huh. um, uh, several of my mom's uncles were elected officials, uh, town supervisor in Mount Pleasant. Was the uh, family on what would be judge. called the progressive side of things? No, no, no not or my, not. No. Sometimes it works the opposite. Yeah, you know? yeah. my my uh, my mom's family that were involved in politics yeah. were uh, Republicans. Hmm. <clears throat> With the exception of one who was a federal judge, he was a Democrat, and he was kind of blackballed by the others. That was the one you got truck, had truck with, maybe? I, I or guess not? somewhat, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I came up during uh, you know the 60s. I graduated yeah. high school in 1972 and became eligible for the draft then. Um, yeah, it was, it was there. You know, I was very uh, interested, obviously, in uh, the Vietnam War and the civil rights yeah. struggle, having yeah. grown up during that period. Yeah. And... Um, I think I broke with my parents politically, um, like around ninth grade. Okay. And, uh, 14 years. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
and started to... That would have been what year? It was, uh, 1969. 69. Uh, well, that 69. was right when there was all that Bobby Dylan, uh, as times they are changing, everything. Too. It was a magic... In my, in my consciousness or calculus, it was a magic moment around 1969-70. Mm -hmm. I really think there were things going on in terms of the evolution of uh, existentially significant things going on. Certainly seemed hopeful. You it know, very it, hopeful. it seemed like there was about to be this momentous change mm -hmm. and that things were going to be so much better. It may be if you, you know. measure things at the level of capability or the unseen level in a certain step, maybe one step meta above what's normally the news reality, there were things going on. I think the weapons became species lethal along about then. That mm. is, that they were of a quality where they could wipe, we could wipe out the entire yeah. Homo sapiens species about then. Couldn't do it yeah. in the first war, Second World War. Yeah, and didn't have enough bombs, I guess, until they accumulated enough you know, hydrogen bombs problem. or whatever at that point. Yeah, yeah. and that's an extension of it's consciousness. We're able to extend our consciousness to the environment and make it other than, in an Eden-like sense, is the way the creatures incur encounter. We can change the environment. Right. Man can make the world. And the weapons have led that research throughout all of history. Mm -hmm. And they finally got to an existentially significant point when you can uh, 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 eliminate the entire species, I which remember, seems to be what the modeling shows for about the year 1970. I think our, our I won't say awareness of it if it hadn't actualized, but our, our perception of that as a reality, I mm -hmm. think, at least mine, goes back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. I oh remember, my God, you know, 62. Yeah. In, yeah, I was so, never so scared. Yeah. I you would have been how old I then? was in third grade. Third, you were aware yeah. of it at that deep level. Yeah, we, well, yeah. We, I was teaching university. Then. We yeah. were we were made aware of it. We yeah. we were got, you know ha, would have air raid drills and yeah. you know hide in the corners in the uh, hallways and duck and cover. Under, yeah, all of that. <laughs> yeah, and and um, you know I, I I could read. I was reading the newspapers. Yeah. You know, uh, we I'd read the the news, the Mirror, the Post, the uh, Herald. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the Times, everything, yeah. every uh -huh. day. Yeah. And so I, it wasn't mystical to me what was happening. Yeah. It was was, you know, we, we might be looking at nuclear annihilation. And I think people had a perception, at least, mm -hmm. that at that point we had already reached the stage where we were capable of eliminating ourselves as a species. Yeah, but I do mean, you realize what an existential significant... We've been here 200,000 years, our yeah, species, or whatever, right? Yeah, no, right. that's yeah, about yeah, what yeah, it tells park, us. Yeah, 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 we're all out of Africa. We're all African. Yep, I know that. Okay, and I just had my DNA done. They traced it back to 60,000 years. Wow. Individually to you me. You don't look a day over you, 60. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, but 60,000 years is a long time. I was in, uh, an ancestor of mine. They can trace it, markers on the Y yeah. chromosome. Uh, to an individual uh, that was 60,000 years ago in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's something they can do that. Spencer Wells, they do it. National Geographic can do it. I, just I think they're going to be doing that for everybody uh, to where they'll get a really clear understanding of the migration of humanity out from Africa. I just heard Michio Kaku talk about God, that this past great week. Guy. Yeah, great yeah. guy. He was talking about it on his, on his show this past week, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. and, um, that he had had, on the one hand, he said, you know, be careful, there's all this hucksterism around this thing. Yeah. And on the other hand, oh, and by the way, I had mine done. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I don't think so. there's hucksterism. It's there. Anyway, that's, a, so, that's yeah. the point being is that 10,000 generations, and one last thing I'm going to say quickly in that vein about the year 1969-70, I personally think there's a good case to be made for the year 1970 in the fullness of time being seen as year one. Mm. It won't be because measured 2011. Or it won't be, you know, 2000 Christian era, 5,776 of the Judaic or anything. It'll be year one because there will be understanding of the significance of qualitative transformation, existentially significant at a higher level, at the level of capability of that extended consciousness that became manifest. We can now destroy them. our, you know, the, that which holds us alive. Well, we had it on one hand, the ability to destroy the entire species rather than just take the machine and go and capture the other village and steal right. their grain and right. become strong and real politique right, and all. Right, it's right. still informing all of the outdated institutions from an era that has been changed at the level of capability qualitatively. Right beginning to get towards something yeah. like an um, evolution where they talk about punctuated equilibrium and we're coming into a new relationship to the universe. There's probably you know, an official awareness of that because they did modify their uh, strategy in terms of war, although they were prepared to, supposedly, and um, certainly sent the message that mm. they were prepared to 
continue on the model, say, of World War II, where we now have all this massive stuff and we're going to throw it at you right, if you don't right. do what you say. I gotta, on the other hand, they didn't actually do it. They didn't. And instead, they're sending out drones and you know, an alternative model. Yeah, I got a guy. I haven't put it, I've put it up. I got it ready. I got the file and everything. I'll put it up on YouTube with a guy named Atwood. He was one of the people in the Kennedy administration, and he was one who was there, and they had gotten something like 150,000 uh, or maybe it was 50,000 troops, and it was all done with the sea lift, total sea lift power of the Soviet Union, uh, unknown, apparently, uh, and uh, 150 atomic-tipped weapons and the missiles to do it, surreptitiously smuggled into Cuba. And right. it wasn't noticed until the U-2 flight right. and that and everything. And uh, he was one that did it, but it was Mr. Khrushchev, really, that right. made the, cr the critical decision. I've never in all my life been so frightened. Yeah. Even though existentially, apparently, if it had gone off in 62, right. there would have been a few scraggling survivors that well, the species would not be eliminated. Right, right. Well, you understand the perhaps. difference? Perhaps. No, I do understand. No, that's completely. what the modeling seems to no, show. No, I understand what you're saying. Mm. You're saying, on the one hand, there'll be an ugly war that's been unparalleled, and on the other hand, there'll be nothing following. That's, well, that's yeah. what you're talking about. Well, it, it's it's just at ex existential level. Yeah. And then one could one like thing like no existence uh, as the as the consequence. For the, on no, the there one would hand. be existence of creatures. There no, would be of creatures humanity, survive, of about. humanity, right. I which is in a certain species. sense the leading edge of. Uh, and then if you're getting at some purpose of what's it all about, Alpha and universe and evolution and everything, we seem to be at a position where we're com on the upverse side. You get people like Fuller, or you get people like Isaac Asimov, and people right. who are comprehensively taking the measure, saying there were things on the living side. This is all pre-Kurzweil. This is all pre-cyber, or anything right. yeah, like I that, know, and everything. So they're coming, and they're saying there are things that are developing which could be liberating of the entire Homo sapiens species within an ecological context, which is a capability on the living side right. or the liberation side. We may be coming to the end of what James Jays called the the nightmare of injustice, which is history. It's right. always been unjust, zero sum for one to win, another has to lose, real politique. And the, the need to have that assumption in terms of undertaking the measure of things right. is coming to an end on the positive side. Neither are ever mentioned. Right. It's because all just the news du jour. You no, know? One, no one discusses context about anything. Thank you. I mean, and the problem, the reason for that, obviously, mm -hmm. is that those that benefit from the existing context don't want people to talk about context. Well, because that's the, that's the form, you know, that's the beginning of a formation of a critique of critical it. thinking well, is yeah. being discouraged. Well, yeah, or, or from yeah. a point when it was not discouraged in the educational process. Or well, so I, I, or I can't speak been, to that. I mean, yeah. I, I went to Catholic school, for example. Oh dear, Jesuits. No, no uh, Franciscans. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and you know there was an interesting dichotomy there. On the one hand. Um, in certain ways, we were encouraged to learn a great deal, yeah. and uh, in others, you started with certain universal truths that were acts of faith mm. that you were not to question whatsoever. Yeah, right. And you know that Catholic schools, I always like to say, Catholic schools make the best atheists. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. because you either end up uh, you know uh, part of the faithful yeah. or someone that has had to. Critique yeah. their way out of that whole paradigm. Yeah, and, that's and a that's so. a, that's a, that's a common thing and everything. Bucky Fuller, I don't know if you ever got into Fuller. Fuller's yeah. maybe the best so, mind in the history of the yeah. universe. He's really good, but he just said the he coined the term synergy, and synergy, particularly if you take some context into time, he said synergy behavior systems unpredicted by the sum of the parts, and it would seem I think Mr. Kaku would agree that the universe is synergetic that there are behaviors of systems unpredicted by the, uh, by the, the sum of the parts of, of the right. summing. I understand. And that that is, so that means you're in a certain sense in the womb in terms of an right. evolving consciousness. Right. And you can't know that consciousness in ultimate terms or anything other than those that have to accept that there's behavior unpredicted is mysterious. Right, well, one of the even things... At, even if we get to a point where we transcend this that we're in now. Well, and, 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 and that you're assuming, or, or, or in, any, in any event, one might assume mm. when you say transcending, the particular model of transcend, you know, transcendation that we think of. But yeah. suppose, for example, yeah. it's nested. For example, suppose yeah. our purpose yeah. as we evolve is to help the universe become self-aware. I think there's something to be said for that. Because we're of that. that. We yeah. are of the yeah. universe, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, but maybe we could go back. No, down that's a big to, philosophical to, uh, issue. I understand. And it's one yeah. that grounding and Fuller wanted us to get to where we could have an operating manual for spaceship Earth, which is something that we don't mm -hmm. have. Yeah. 
when you get a new even a concept of it is a good place to start it I mean, is a lot he, of people he, don't have that i did a little search on that concept uh, one was transcend material scarcity that 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 side of the destructive scenario would be at the level of capability that we were transcending material scarcity at the right. level of our capability through good design doing right. more with less all ephemeralization nanotechnology all these things whatever are coming and, and the consequence yeah. of history even, so that we know. may be coming to a time of liberation right. of the human society right. when the human society has always been in Enslaved by a few powerful leaders, well, I mean, and in, still in, is. In a way, Marx, and, and Marx predicted the, yeah. you know, the, the, mm. the possibility of that. That mm -hmm. with technology, that's mm. where he put it. Yeah. That with you know with the advent and uh, the advancement of technology, that uh, there would be more time for leisure and there would be more surplus production. And if you once you got away from the contradiction mm. that exists in capitalism, mm -hmm. that's cert that you know basically surplus is your enemy. Yeah. To where surplus is you know beneficial. Yeah. or at least you know can help to, to move to the next stage of liberation yeah. mm -hmm. that was you know that's a hundred and some odd year old concept at yeah. this point but yeah, it's yeah. not even widely discussed in this country yeah the, generally the proposition is we may have transcended material scarcity I did a search on that and Google and I get six million hits on people investigating that now <laughs> autodidactic people who aren't tied into the very special interest canons right. of the special They're sub curious, parts like of what knowledge. about this right, right. Yeah. and youth is going that way and the technology is moving that way so they can educate themselves rather than accept the canon as is being laid down by the sacerdotal right. classes of the very special interests, whether economic, political, or whatever you have. Right. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I do, absolutely. So a liberation may be at hand, which is a good... Isaac Asimov said that to me in an interview. This is the defining generation in the evolution of human consciousness. That's, that's possible, for sure. It's something to be born into that kind of a time, isn't it? You yeah. could have been born in the 6th century, you know, 2,000 years to invent a tax. Yeah. Now it's coming in exponential in every field from all directions, everything over the wire every day is coming in in just Niagara proportions, the, the, the subparts of the pattern that can be recognized. And we don't have an operating manual that takes into account that capability. You know, the flip side of that okay. is that if we, we might be living in the era where we were presented with that potentiality and fail and die. Well, I would suggest we are. Yep. Because we're outdated, we're, we're reifying. You know the term yeah, reifying? Sure. Re yeah, trying to establish as more real as and again, solid right. Yeah, right. The, the assumptions of the outdated. If you're in a system where you can destroy the species whereas you can't, that's a fundamental change. If you're in a system where we've transcended scarcity, right. that there is enough for all. Right. And so, so the way you form capital, everything, that's a qualitative transformation. But all of your institutions are formulated architecture, right. thought, right. institutions, under the, prior all this, right. under the previous condition, and you need vision of that, and it's the intellectuals that are not enough able to project that concept to where it comes real in terms of our political and business leadership. And you have, you have problems like this. There are p centers of power mm -hmm. that are unparalleled in history Absolutely. that have the levers of this technology first at, uh, among, uh, above everything else at the service of the protection of their the position old order. of power. Yeah, the old order. And so yeah. as the contradiction grows mm -hmm. more intensive, mm -hmm. they are able to apply the sum total of human labor, skill, investment, technology to continuing the contradiction. To their special interests. And, 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 yeah. and we're looking yeah. at a manifestation yeah. of it in the economy right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, Absolutely. In, in, in uh, like colloquial terms, what I say to people when that are trying to understand the difference between where we are right now yeah. in the business cycle yeah. and where we have been previously, yeah. in that uh, there's been a class war, yeah. they won, it's over, now what? Uh -huh. okay. and, and that is sort it's all of run an, by analogous the... to what the larger picture that right. we're talking about. Uh -huh. You have you know, the uh, leftover structures of you know, that which got us here. Yeah. And you have new conditions such as sufficient uh, you know, goods and services for everyone to live and even live somewhat comfortably. There's enough food, uh, yeah. uh, en enough capacity to produce housing, uh, transportation, right. all of these things, and even the technology to start abating the negative environmental and social consequences of those things, Within including communications right. uh, down to the atomic level per right. person. Yeah, thank you. On yeah. the one hand, yeah, it's and on the other yeah, hand, yeah. where you could be providing input, for example, through your computer into mm. that model to mm. help formulate it, yeah. instead 
that camera that's pointing at you mm -hmm. is watching everything that you do <laughs> to move towards that, mm -hmm. to thwart you, yeah. so that the power of the people mm -hmm. who are invested in not having that happen uh -huh. can continue to prevent it from happening. Right, right, right. And it, it's building like this. And it's getting to a crescendo. It's a structural. There's structural yeah. things economically. I just told you on a Google alert I had there that uh, for this month of now, they, 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 in the formulation of jobs, because and realize right. it's a lot of it's economics, and so right. we want to get to Libya and that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, the, the job that they, the economy apparently created sixteen thousand right. jobs, sixteen thousand jobs last month, right. and we got what four hundred and forty million or something that are unemployed. Unemployed, and that's officially. And and it said so under, and it even said new use of Google alerts. Don't, I didn't get a chance to check the details, but it said so incredibly under what was expected. And the unemployment rate jumped right to 9.2, and you got an election coming up where all the people can talk about in terms of getting buying power to the people is to get them jobs, and the jobs may not be structurally there because of the evolution of events. Well, again, we'll go back to this problem. What's happened, essentially, is that as capitalism developed, and you know, you want to use Lenin or whichever model to describe it, yeah. you know, that you've reached the you know, level of imperialism and you have these increased demands, to extract return, mm -hmm. and that gets manifest by um, making individual workers more productive, applying technology to do that. Yeah. Uh, more, more, so you're getting more value as as capital as for ca less of an investment, keeping a larger share of the return, and yeah. this is a, a, a demand um, f of the problem. system for them. The problem so, of demand. So while while that's happening. I mean, you've seen it fully expressed now across national boundaries, particularly intensively over the last 20 or 30 years, yeah. so that you're looking at an international working class, in fact, not self-aware as such, but, but aware by capital and treated that way as uh -huh. such across legal systems and everything, mm -hmm. where you're looking at 9% unemployment in the United States, which really translates into 20 or 30% yes, because those of the people who, don't stop looking. who yeah. gave yeah. up because yeah. there's nothing for them. Right. They're it's not struck. counted. Yeah. But those, so the work, the few workers that are working here, if you look across the entire working class of five or six billion people, mm -hmm. you know, there are a couple billion people that aren't even counted as workers in that right. group. Okay. And then another group of people that are workers in mm -hmm. places like Bangladesh mm -hmm. or Haiti mm -hmm. or wherever mm -hmm. that, you know, have just enough subsistence to show up for work or you know to have a child that can show up when I'm too sick to go right, or whatever right. and they're not a part of that official calculus uh -huh. but that situation is mm -hmm. getting worse mm -hmm. and that's the soil mm -hmm. on which the American working class that was treated as if it were middle class has stood on and while that soil is, is eroding they are finally we are finally falling into that same morass. Mm -hmm. This is a demand of the existing system. It's mm -hmm. a material requirement of mm -hmm. it. If you're going to continue to to extract value mm -hmm. under the paradigm, or create that value. Well, I'm talking about as extract. far as capital oh, okay, is yeah. to extract. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. Because there yeah. are conditions on, under which the creation of value. Mm -hmm is not necessarily to the benefit of the people that are there, no, but it's rather... to the benefit of the already wealthy. Right, yeah. but it doesn't always benefit them. Sometimes it benefits them to first expand their ownership of the existing, even if, there's a, even if you end up mm. suffering a net loss mm -hmm. in actual accumulated value. Mm -hmm. If I go from owning 10% of 1T mm -hmm. to 20% of 0.8T, mm -hmm. for example, yeah, as yeah. the aggregate of things, right. and reach a point where I now can control all of it and then set the conditions for the production of new value yeah. afterwards, uh -huh. but as the primary or sole beneficiary yeah. of it, I'm going to pursue that course. Yeah. And there are people with the power to uh -huh. do that uh -huh. that have been doing it, and that's how you've seen some of the things that don't make sense to someone expecting that we're going, the auto industry is going to grow the auto industry mm. in order to grow. Mm. And when you look at the uh, ownership of stock, for example, yeah. in a particular industry by capital that was accumulated in another industry, yeah. and start looking at the relationship between those things, Stolen. you start to understand mm. it from the perspective of control and power yeah. first mm -hmm. with these other things merely as, merely as, but as the levers of that, uh -huh. so that if there's going to be another uh, period mm -hmm. of you know capital um, uh, uh, creation and and uh, expansion mm -hmm. that it will happen under uh, the control of a particular portion of the elite 
that is pursuing that as their primary goal rather than the entire structure's development mm -hmm. as their primary goal. Yeah. See, the yeah. myth is always yeah. that if you allow people to pursue their self-interest to to the maximum, mm -hmm. you know, the individual, rugged individualism, you By know, ha myth behind capital. Van that, Hayek or, or, well, or, or a million Friedman, of them, yeah, I mean, yeah. whoever, you know, right go wing, back, yeah, you yeah. know, go back to the 18th century yeah. even. Uh -huh. um, you know, the myth is always that if you allow people to go out there and work and, and get, have free reign, mm -hmm. that they end up building this thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a historical they evidence have. of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. That, that, that's, that, that is like a, an immutable part of it. That's mm -hmm. the myth. Yeah. And, in fact, it's not. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm looking at the pursuit of power first, for mm -hmm. example, yeah. and mm -hmm. I'm someone that has a great deal of it already, yeah. and I have a good solid understanding of the mechanical processes, mm -hmm. including capital development, that mm -hmm. are going on around me, mm -hmm. then I might play a different game, and that might involve allowing or even forcing, mm -hmm. uh, say, a net loss in the aggregate of accumulated capital for the time being, mm -hmm. so I can find advantage in that, get more levers of control, and then have you know the next stage of development you know more or less at my fingertips but the one thing is clear is it's all accumulating in a small plutocratic class at the top exactly the wealth is all going there murdoch just didn't close down that I news saw that. of the world let's, that's but, a, yep. amazing so yeah. let, let's let's go back to this so the i mean that's an example tactic. of what i'm talking it's about exactly yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly we're talking about mm. tactic and yeah. okay so mm. if i you know i finally get my hands on um, you know, on on this Megilla, yeah, Megilla, you know, that's a good you know term, whatever this yeah. you know contraption, this structure, mm -hmm. um, and am allowed to pursue it unfettered. Mm -hmm. um, see, the thing that we have to look at is, we have a system, and that that makes it obvious, where the purpose of everyone's association mm -hmm. in this in these economic relationships and mm -hmm. political relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, it's lost. It's been a really long time since people sat down and said, yes, we're going to have, like, like they did say in the Constitutional Convention in you know, the 18th century or whatever, mm -hmm. we're going to be working together doing stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the goal? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Yeah. And you know, what, what are the conditions going to be? But really, what are we trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. If growing the thing for its own sake is the purpose, mm -hmm. okay, then you know, these myths aside, fine, hyper-development under yeah. a capitalist model, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You consider that. Mm -hmm. If the purpose is let's meet the needs of the people, uh -huh. you can now not argue that this is the only method of doing that or even a very good method mm -hmm. while you're looking at billions of people in poverty and mm -hmm. that poverty increasing. Um, obviously, political dissent it's required that it be stifled because so many people no longer have a stake in the outcome of things under the existing paradigm. Right, right. You know, so if the object is to make, the, you know, the greater good for the greatest number of people, you're going to have to look at radical fundamental change. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the first thing that has to be done is a discussion of what is the purpose of our associating in society in the first place. That has to start happening. Okay, could you back up a little bit? Yeah. Maybe could we wait? Is there any purpose of Fuller? Back to Fuller. He's yeah, a okay. polymath. Uh, is there? You could look at uh, thermodynamics. You could look at the universe, I and mean, we've got that, and we're in this universe. Uh, Parallel universes, perhaps, string theory, theorizing tells us, and so forth. But Fuller used to cast about, and he said, the second law of thermodynamics in closed system is all systems move toward chaos, to the limits of the system right. in physics. Right. And, it's there. and uh, he used to cast about, and he said, is there a countervailing force or L a development in universe, as he put it, and that we were in an orbit around the sun in such a way that stayed within a Goldilocks thing for so many billions of years that allowed evolution to begin. Mm -hmm. The whole evolutionary process out of inorganic to organic. I understand. Is it 3.8 billion years ago it goes and it comes up? Is there any purpose to biological evolution on the planet? And he postulated it very well could be seen that there is a counter, that, that, uh, that, uh, that evolution is uh, biological evolution itself is a anti-entropic function in the universe that moves across entropy and brings increased conscious pattern understanding of the process of which we are a part that could comport with scientific understanding of of uh, 
of, of evolution in evolutionary scientific terms that gives a purpose to what human evolution or what ev the evolutionary process itself is. Right. I understand that. And that it goes Maybe. and we move across the point. We appeared 200,000 years ago off the hominoid line. Right. Three, four million years ago was Australopithecine. It was not that. There was a movement along right. there. And, it, and Chardin, Catholic, and that, he could say there might be a, or Robert Wright might say there may be a purpose to that. Okay, that kind of thing. So that's a larger issue other than the one that is postulated within an economic model. Well, here's the thing. I but mean, it may well be that the you purpose. Of, yeah, absolutely. It may well be that the universe has some purpose entirely. Syner that's going to be. It may or may not. The, it's synergy. Right, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, right. Let's say that the universe has a, a distinct purpose from from our needs going well, forward. Well, that's our religion. That has. Well, but let's yeah. let's just say you know, absent all of that, yeah. the universe is heading in its own direction mm -hmm. for towards its own purpose and mm -hmm. has nothing to do with us. And at some point, it's going to shake us I off. Well, okay. Well, let's but, just allow that okay. as okay. Okay, but uh, on the other hand, but it may mean our purpose. Purpose well, has no, no, written no, in well, there. Let me let me follow the thought. Yeah. So let's let's say that that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if it is, from our perspective, so what? Mm. We have to look at. We have these skills. We uh -huh. have these facilities. Uh -huh. We have these tools, uh -huh. and and we have our own needs, wants, and desires. Uh -huh. And so at some point, on the agenda should be what do we want? Uh -huh. And and we yes. can look at that within within the context of of, of humanity only, yeah. Yeah. like so you know between inter alia you know uh, classes and yeah. you know whatever other yeah. groupings you want to make. Mm -hmm. And we can also look at it like okay, we are of the universe at this stage, uh -huh. and perhaps as we move forward synergistically with the universe, we become the universe. Or we or no, we move to another stage within that a priori maybe, mysterious evolutionary may, pattern in it, universe it, that it, can be discerned. It may well be that. Otherwise. It may well be That's that. That's the point. That's we couldn't do it in the past. Right. We Understood. had to invent things. I mean, like people gods didn't have these discussions yeah. right. before. They didn't have the material wherewithal to, you know, to get to it because they didn't have the, uh, the analogies that have been studied. They didn't have the data we have. They didn't and have we're being besieged every day. It's an, uh, an avalanche of things coming in from every field that's showing that the water is breaking. We're like in the womb. We're coming to a right. new relationship in the universe, and it's on the razor's edge. Destruction, annihilation. Right. Or liberation right. seems to be the thing that's up for grabs now in terms of the human condition. Look at the um, look at the Western economy as, and as a uh, reflection of that, certainly, mm -hmm. or as you know a uh, derivative of that. Yeah, I uh -huh. mean we have we have exactly that condition confronting us. You know, in, in, at this in the moment as you here. and I talk. Yeah, yep. that's and right. And also in terms of of politics. Mm -hmm. You know, when I when I was coming up. Um, we were told, that, you know, it was big in the 60s that, um, and, and going forward, that, you know, the course this laid before us leads either to fascism or socialism. Yeah, that, that was, was we a told. dialectic. Okay, yeah. and, and, you know, and, and I believed it, mm -hmm. and subject to, you know, redefinition of terms and, yeah. and maybe, you know, some embellishments of uh, information, you know, that I've acquired and the history has provided since then, mm -hmm. I still agree. Yeah. And, and that kind of a dichotomy, um, I think, is reproduced from, you know, the larger ones that we're talking about yeah. here, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. But again, we'll go back to whether that's true or not. Yeah. There's a point in time where we look at ourselves um, as a group saying, what is it that we need and want first, mm. and make those decisions, and then look at the larger structures, yeah. including the, you know, the, even if you take it out to a universal or a galactic scale or whatever, yeah, yeah. and say, okay, well, within the context of this, about 800,000 years from now, we're going to have to make some real heavy decisions, <laughs> but... First of all, yeah. let's figure out who's going to eat tomorrow. Right. Uh -huh. Let's figure out how to make this, the species able to survive and thrive. Right. Let's figure out how to provide every individual on the planet with the wherewithal to make their life possible, um, enjoyable to the degree possible, and, maybe and, and fruitful. And maybe liberated well, exactly. from the dictates that of seems, a system where they've been essentially like serfs on a feudal estate. That seems a necessary it, precondition to the things I'm talking about. That thing of Fuller's where he came up, it came out of World Game, and it came out of World Game uh, Design Science Decade 65-75. That date of 1970 had been projected from 52, when we were going to cross the 50% mark of the total population's capability to be seen as haves and have-nots. Get rid of all the details in that. Right. He said it would be around 1972 from 1952. Right. So with and he said it would be accelerated. We crossed that line also oh, yeah. about 1970 when as there had been in the past technologically augmented uh, a, 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 a scarcity there we crossed the 50 percent mark in terms of the world population in the year 1970 the same year as the weapons became species lethal. 
lethal. Seems to me it should be something that could be taken into account, that we were transcending scarcity, and that was also the year you were born. Right. Or when you were born into, and it was also called the era of Woodstock. Right. There was a Woodstock. So it wasn't sex, drugs, and rock and roll only. It was and it wasn't <laughs> Vietnam. It wasn't uh, you know civil rights. Not all enough of that sex was part and too of much rock and roll. And too much. <laughs> well, there was a lot of sex. On the, I, you wouldn't have been at Woodstock, but right, I was. Right, and everything. Right, but anyway, right. it was a moment, and it was a spirit. There was. It was everywhere in the world. Intellectually, it was really there sure. was something blowing in the it, wind. It, big. Th there, were, there were. First of all, you had in, in post -war, the post war, you know, post World War II environment. You started to see uh, seriously. I mean, the, the potentiality and, and also the actualization of this happened prior to World War I even, but you started to see an acceleration of this after World War II where there were national liberation movements and, you know, just the idea of nationalism and of anti-imperialism yeah. becoming manifest all over the place yeah. from, you know, in, in places like Iran mm -hmm. um, until they uh, killed Mossadegh. Um, in, 53. Uh, right, that's 53. Mm. Um, and, you know, well, in China, mm -hmm. the first real large one, I guess, um, in uh, 47, 49, that mm. period. Yeah. Um, you saw also um, in Africa, um, in the, in the, starting after the, uh, really, um, after World War II, but really becoming manifest in the 50s and early 60s, uh -huh. um, and in, also in South and Central America. Mm. And, um, Allende? Uh, yeah, sure. 70, well, then 70. Yeah, 70 and, yep. yeah 73. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, right. Uh, September mm. 11th, 73, yeah. as a matter of oh, fact. Oh, got it down cold. Yep. That's yep. good. <laughs> we well, need that. Chapter a, and verse. Good. The first September 11th. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. I, yeah. That's right. That's true. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah. a suicide by machine gun from 100 feet away. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, anyway. um, so you started to see this uh, process, you know, becoming manifest or becoming obvious, I guess, mm -hmm. um, particularly after World War II. Um, whether, and, and then, you know, in terms of looking at 1970 as a watershed, uh, A, we can now destroy the entire species, B, uh, the have and have nots have reached a 50 point mark. Yeah. Um, and it's you going also, up. Yeah, it's yeah, going up exponentially. Yeah, of course, these things are all moving. Yeah. But, but you also saw, um, I mean, you had a, a taste of this in Korea and you had a taste of this in the various places where the yeah. national liberation movements were being successful, but you saw mm -hmm. for the first time. A, an imperial power of the magnitude of the United States mm -hmm. thwarted uh -huh. in Southeast Asia yeah, big in the event. same time frame. Yeah, right. And right. and you saw an alliance developing. Mm -hmm. It never, well, I don't, won't say never, but it, it didn't reach its fullest potential. But you saw an alliance developing among self-aware, newly educated members of the working class in this country mm -hmm. making alliance with the people who were fighting the common enemy, mm -hmm. um, because you saw a student movement, forget the motivations, wasn't because people were afraid of getting drafted, yeah. wasn't because they had better dope here than they had there, yeah. was it they didn't want to leave mommy's house, whatever mm. you, know, you want to impute yeah. to that. Right, right. What happened materially was that we were in the streets here mm -hmm. demanding that the government here stop and the corporations here stop exploiting and killing the mm -hmm. people there. Mm -hmm. We were fighting them at the same time they were. Mm -hmm. We weren't taking up arms in the main, mm -hmm. but uh, we stopped them. Mm -hmm. In the aggregate, mm -hmm. we stopped them. Yeah, they had to. They had to do that. Then that was we lost that war. Well, we won that war. Okay, tell me about <laughs> how we won that war. We stopped I, it. It depends on who we is. Oh, the United, the United States, States government States, and military mean, lost it. Yeah, they lost it. Right. That's, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, the, the side States. we were fighting. Sorry, it just comes trivially yeah, yeah, yeah. off the tongue. No, I you know, know that I know, kind know. of thing and everything. That's why I said yeah. Yeah, and that's something they're all going to try and get rid of. I mean, to get rid of the Vietnam syndrome, and that's yeah. what they're going to rock us about. We're going to whip them. We that's are right. strong. We're the empire. It's too bad, in a certain sense, America's come into that. We're now a super empire. I don't know, 250, 300,000 troops all over the world, bases everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we're bombing in Libya now. We're bombing almost with these predators. Yeah. We've got this thing. It's a very sad thing. The United States of America has just emerged into being like the greatest imperial, imperialist power. And yeah. it seems to be just going along, and a lot of people are upset with that. We're making a lot of enemies, it seems to me. Well, you know, if you, go, if you look at history, the best teacher, as you know, almost everyone acknowledges, uh, the foundation of the country really um, is becoming fully expressed with the accumulation of power in the same, you know, successor, successor society. Uh -huh. A country that was founded on genocide and slavery right. is now, you yeah. know, has the, all of the wherewithal to, to reproduce that all over the planet. Right, right, right. You know, this is really a, a fulfillment of the original mission. Yeah, right. That's right. And until we come to terms with that, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to change the nature of it. Okay. 
And the thing is, it used to be politi uh, uh, po politics and the economy were linked at the hip. It used to be called political economy. Right. And we understand that we have a lot of problems, and a lot of problems are at the level. First of all, I don't. I think the major problem that exists is intellectually, and maybe it's the intellectuals, do not bring into this large systems, critical thinking context of the situation we're in. It never comes up in the news right, I was or say, anything. Where would, it's where would all, they do it? Well, uh, maybe in public access or in television programs right. like UD, right. WBAI, the spirit of Woody Guthrie and the spirit of the guy who started uh, Pacifica back in the 50s, people who are answering it. You know, the critics, the critical thinking and that sort of thing. You've been involved in BAI and in trying to get I was, I was fired from WBAI for critically reporting on the, on the uh, they, they, they call it the internal politics, but mm -hmm. critically reporting on the power uh, politics that were taking place over control of the station. Right, but it, from these sources and that, and then God bless them, the mark, some of the critics, you know, you got you got a long history of people that were trying to, uh, we, uh, who's the guy, uh, uh, the power and pro project, um, Oh, gosh, the guy, Henry George, he was saying things that people were supporting at the turn of the 19th, 20th century. Resources should be widely owned. Mark Twain, Tolstoy, a lot of people signed a huge number of books. So there were ideas about how we should do things differently. Right. But it just all got to be where the power got more and more accumulated within the hands of those who had already owned or managed to build up a, 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 an ownership collateralization ability to invest in something that's going to right. grow and so forth. And the concentration of the wealth has just become almost uh, obscene now. It's just concentrated in the, the tax cut of Mr. Bush. His right. singular event when he came into office was that it all went, Krugman said in one of his articles, the benefit didn't go only to the 1%, not even hardly to one-tenth of 1%. They got something, but it overwhelmingly went to one-hundredth of 1% right. the wealth and the advantage of that which is now being argued by the Republicans, we can't touch that. Which is kind you of know, what you know I was what arguing saying? before. Yeah. When I was saying that, yeah. you know, if you look at the elite, quote unquote, that mm. you know, that's that the owns financial, capital, the financial well, capital, or the power yeah. elite. So, yeah. and, and there's aren't a heavy overlay. The, aren't they linked? I would say that there's a heavy overlay of yeah. the two. Uh -huh. Okay, but I, I don't know honestly. Mm. I don't know if anyone, but they know exactly what the unity of identity is between the two groupings. Okay. Yeah. But um, certainly, you know, the, it's not a Single-celled, you know, animal, you know, and and, and yeah. yeah, there there are uh, competing yeah. interests among them. I'm sure yeah, that yeah. they're the mo probably the most pathological beings on the planet. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, and I would I would think that they more jealously look at each other's power mm -hmm. than they do at you know, mine, for example, or yours. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe not in the aggregate, yeah. and maybe not overtly, and maybe not um, in terms of when they go to work or they send people to work, mm -hmm. you know, to go out and grab what's left of what we yeah, have. Right. But I bet while they're sitting there sleeping or mm -hmm. thinking or whatever, they're looking at each other more closely mm -hmm. than they're looking at anyone oh, else. Oh, yeah, I think so. It's a if I were thieves, them, yeah, I would be, yeah. if for nothing else, than to keep them out of my pocket. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but they're doing that, and it's like a... It's like a what is it? It's like uh, divide and conquer. No, not that so much as uh, just uh, power, greed, yeah. greed, and uh, and and business smarts. Uh, you know, the people Goldman Sachs are really smart. They really know how sure. to manipulate things. They're getting all kinds of ability to do that one percentage point over prime and work the system derivatives and swaps and all kinds of things nobody can understand very much or anything. They develop these systems, and it's just giving them that. And it, they've been in place. They had to bail them out in 2008. And everything like that because they'd been glass steagall and some projections had not been had been voted out and that kind of thing by the political process. So all the powers is, is accumulating to them. Right. And there's and there's not an opposition or is there an effective opposition to the uh, ownership of all the capital assets is becoming more concentrated. They're on course yes. to do that even ever more to eliminate any kind of distribution to the folks. Of things through governmental, you know, Social Security and Medicare and that kind of stuff that can be done through a political process. Is there any effective uh, critique? Is there any system of thinking from intellectuals that could hoist the capitalist system, the imperialist capitalist system, the model that was set down by the United States of America, more or less, 1776, 
could be hoist on its own petard of inherent contradiction uh, and bring about a context for an alternative notion of how capital is going to be formed and how demand is going to be distributed to the people of the planet so that we don't have a system where we can produce an overwhelming cornucopia, but the people are not going to have the ability to clear the market with money that would be distributed to them because the technology is responsible for production and they have no ownership stake in that. Is I, it a big I, or is not well, issue? No, for, first, well, let me answer the first question because mm -hmm. what, what you started to ask was, um, is there anything um, that, can pre that prevents it? And yeah, there is a thing. A the, context of understanding. The thing is, no, the thing is, first, the th there's a thing. The thing mm. is called gravity or material reality. Okay. The, the yeah, you know, know. We're see again, we'll go back to, the, you know, the internal contradiction in capitalism, uh, which we're seeing manifest, like, all yeah. over the place yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, their system is based upon being able to extract surplus value. Okay. And, and it has its own dynamic where it has to happen at a deeper and more accelerated like rate. a shark yeah like a shark that's mm. growing yes it has and, to right, grow. yeah and, move and, and through and the water and now has higher yeah. food requirements yeah. and yeah. There, there's it's on an exponential path yeah um, and as it eats it's consuming the food supply and after it eats the last meal it has a problem and that is what we're approaching right now under the pr previous conditions yeah. and um, that's why we're looking at uh, you know that's why we're looking at uh, the emphasis on, you know, introducing overt fascistic political controls. Yeah. We are, A, in an unprecedented historical situation economically, yeah. where in this country, it, everyone now acknowledges their children are not going to do as well as they. Um, that is something that's been more or less in people's minds since the late 60s, early 70s, yeah, and it's yeah. becoming manifest. In the United since States, this, it has I'm been. Talking about in the the, world, I'm yeah. talking about in the United yeah, States. Yeah, but also in the world. But, uh, but here yeah. in the United yeah, States, yeah. you have this enclave Progress, that yeah. sits on top of the yeah. structure of imperialism right. that, you know, it captured the, the, the bulk of or the remainder of after World War II, but that it's been building on since they, the first community on this continent. Right. And um, the material reality that once you've eaten the last piece of fish, there are no more meals, is coming home to roost here. So now the people that sit atop this model are looking at either do we go down with the ship or do we rebuild the ship under ourselves uh, in a way that will continue to float us and are they gonna make, and the question before us is are they gonna try to make this out of our bodies? And our Soil question and has to be, right, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Our question has to be, um, since that's not taking us any place anymore, mm -hmm. do we want to go somewhere ourselves, you know, of our own choosing? Mm -hmm. How are we going to get there and mm -hmm. what tools and materials are available to us to get there? Mm -hmm. And if you're looking yeah. for now the second part of your question, yeah. where is there a critique mm -hmm. that does this? Yeah. What we ought to be doing is shopping for a critique yes. that asks asks and answers or suggests the answers to those questions. Yes. The the first two word question is What's next? Because there is something next. Yeah. The, this yeah, order right. is right. over. Right, right. So right. going mm. forward, mm. what is next? Mm -hmm. And we're going to start with: um, Do we believe that um, we have a common uh, fate? Do we look at what's next for us, or do we look at each of us look at what's next for me? Because okay. what's next for me, mm -hmm. being asked by a bunch of us, is basically the grave. Yeah, right. If we sit yeah, down and right. assume right. we have, because even if we were going to be sharks yeah. about it rather than, you know, ants or something yeah. more yeah. social, yeah. Um, we would still have to look at, okay, well, I need that guy and I need her and right. I need them right. and start assembling that. But if you want to look at the system, if you, well, the I'm, whole system I'm talking of about, biology, I'm talking about the right? Yeah, okay, yeah, there's right. that ecology, right? Okay, because yeah. uh -huh. there's that yeah, whole absolutely. aspect to it. But even if you want to look at humanity as a source of wealth for each of the members, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about in terms of information potential for nurturing mm -hmm. um, of uh, exchange value mm -hmm. by propping you up. I'm propping myself mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to look at it that way, then the answer to what's next, mm -hmm. what you want it to happen within that context, and mm -hmm. so you start trying to problem solve how to get there. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. right now we have unprecedented tools to do that. We do, okay. We have, we, we can, we have 
a billion, two billion people online, for example. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know what software there is for, gee, let's all have a long chat. Yeah. But we never had anything, even if we all decided let's meet Tuesday online, there was no online. Yeah, and don't forget it's going no. exponential. Yeah, sure. It's going exponential, the capability. Little yeah. slice. Yeah, I saw right. on YouTube uh -huh. yesterday or the day mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. apparently in a 30-day period, mm -hmm. every 30-day period now, uploaded to YouTube mm -hmm. is more content than was produced by the movie and television industry in history uh -huh. from the beginning until like last year. Ain't that encouraging? It's easier to capture and utilize than a video too and it's going and the kids all know how to do it. That's very encouraging to be there but we still don't have an operating manual. We don't have an well, overall right. measure of things. Sure. We need that and we need something that can not only liberate possibly the masses of the world and the ecology but also the tricky thing is to present some sort of an alternative that can resonate on the edge of a, like a big geodesic dome which is reality and vibrate through to the benefit of the whole. A synergistic kind of understanding right. of things. We don't have that. There's a hundred trillion cells in the human organism and every cell matters. Right. Every cell is part of a system or right. a subsystem. It's systems thinking. Right. And we get to that and that there is enough. And, and one thing in terms of a Malthusian thing, you were talking about the capitalists right, eating everything. Right. But in a Mal through good design, through doing more with less, through good design, you got a communication satellite. It used to take 175,000 tons of copper cable to reach Boston. Uh, London from New York is down to a 400 pound transonder, you know, right. uh, or the chip. Or Understood. The, so, there's a, so there is a possibility that people can not only be liberated, but liberated to a comfortable, leisured way of life, Absolutely. which is a liberated context, rather than the doggy -dog, dog race for mere survival, that is what they're assuming, and that we need some sort of a new economic theory. Seems to me Libya might have been part of a model that was able to be questioning the basic premise that came out of our revolution has been established and thought of as historically legitimate, but yeah. is not legitimate because they do not have, but he had ideas that I know I've been very interested in, and I know you have, second part of the program, we're gonna to wanna to talk about some of that, but we look for a model that relates to the questions of how the capital is gonna be formed, this technological production, you can produc produce a cornucopia if you get down to work and be done automated, you have to have a way of distributing <laughs> demand to the people. <coughs> we don't have that. Right. How are we going to distribute? How are we going to form capital? Is there anything to be said for saying that the capital instruments, instead of being all owned by a tiny plutocratic class that gets more concentrated, creating production capability, but there's no labor required in the production, as Keynes warned about? Right. It seems to be operative. Right. 16,000 jobs last month were created. My and it's not just because of bad will or they're waiting for the, uh, the system to get in place. The bankers are sitting on trillions of dollars. They're waiting, but they're not going to be, if they could invest overseas or so, someplace else, they're not going to. But the ownership of the capital could be held by everybody as a way of, of the private sector developments to be able to distribute uh, buying power to the people through the way things are, by ownership, stake in the way things are being produced as a model. The only country in the world that was doing that outside of the normal model, Keynesian and everything like that, International Monetary Fund, was Libya. Right. And we're attacking it. But I just that, wonder that's why. if that can make any sense to you. That's a good part of why, absolutely. Libya might be a model ahead of history's curve the way the United States was ahead of feudalism. I, I think it's a very timely one, okay? Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I mean, if you were going to look at Libya, I'm going to describe very briefly my understanding of it. Um, I, I would tend to look at it as a tra <coughs> transitional one, okay. one that's a step you know, outside of where we are now, um, not necessarily the destination, but a step no, on, the, right. on the way to the as destination. As the United States of America in 1776 was, right. was to a thousand years of feudalism and dynastic order. Right. We were ahead. It was had to be built. But, but, but they're ahead of where we are, and we call ourselves historically legitimate, and, and we're heading for the precipice. And until right now, until uh, the, the uh, Europeans and Americans started getting involved in Libya, this is, without, this is without the chattel slavery and genocide mm. until this moment. Mm -hmm. um, the, the nature of the Libyan, uh, and, and I'm going to deal with it to an extent along the lines of uh, property rights. If there's yeah. anything that I'm qualified yeah. as an expert in where I could testify in court as an expert uh -huh. on this property rights, I have 40 years history in the title insurance business. Very so good for my, you. That is the background. institution of private property. Right. That's private, right. Pri private sector, private property. Right. Okay, right. that's good okay. because that's, 
that like people in the socialist bent would think it's an evil institution right. in and of itself. So it should be eliminated. Here's, you know, here's the in, Mar in Russia. So here's the you know here's the uh, the way the way that uh, that I Develop, see it. Yeah. If you have first of all using real estate as a model, yeah. you have a variety of ways in, within the U.S. legal system mm -hmm. within the laws of the state of New York of owning real property. Mm -hmm. The one is fee simple estate, uh, fee simple absolute estate, that I own this property. Yeah. There's a deed, it's in my name, mm -hmm. here's the boundaries of the property, yeah. it's where, that's where it's situated, I own it. Meets and bounds. Okay. And yeah, yeah. This yeah, that's a way of describing the, yeah. the perimeter of it, yeah. but yes. That's one way, owning it outright, fee simple, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another way is a condominium ownership, okay. um, where say a group of us would parcel up this property and, and subdivide it in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. I have an apartment here, you have one there, we yeah. have one here. There are areas, we own the interior right. space of our apartments right. and the walls, mm -hmm. the interior walls, in fee simple absolute. Okay. And then there are the structure and yeah. the land on which the structure sits right. that we own as tenants in common. Uh -huh. um, say there's 20 equal sized apartments, we each own one 20th of, as partners mm -hmm. of the structure and the land. Mm -hmm. That's a condominium ownership. We're another a is a cooperative. Left on okay. this program, and and so another is a cooperative mm -hmm. no. where yeah. there's a corporation that owns everything. Yeah. We and each shares own shares in, in the corporation yeah. and then individually mm -hmm. we lease from that corporation yeah. our okay so just within this economic context right. is a variety of forms of ownership yeah. and relating to each other uh -huh. that are acknowledged as possible and given no more or less weight under New York law. And those okay. those ideas are really important. Yes. In terms and of there, understanding the private sector. There's a whole sector. lot of economic yeah. organization around right. each one of them and right. such. So I'm saying within that limited context you have this. Now Libya. Yeah. In Libya, everyone owns their home. Yep, that's right. Okay, that is as a private property right. As and as a human right. As a human right. Okay, good. You yeah. own your home and it's not mortgaged. Right. You own it. There's no question. Your having a place to live is no longer a question. Mm -hmm. And the quality of it is indistinguishable from that of the you know average American that is not living in a rat infested, moldy, yeah. right, right, you know, blowhole. Right, right. Okay, you have a decent house to live, and the society recognizes that and provides it. And an automobile. First, second. Automobiles they have because as part of their transportation yeah, system. Yeah. More importantly, health care yeah. is available to everyone, and the health care is also adequate. And if it's not adequate enough, they they'll send you country, yeah. pay for you to go there, right. pay for your hotel, everything. Yeah. In addition to that, the oil wealth of the country, mm. the income from that is distributed monthly to uh, every family in mm, Libya. Right. They get a check from between a thousand to three thousand dollars per household, mm -hmm. and the food there is cheaper than here. Their housing's already covered. Education is free. Health care is free mm -hmm. so people are banking things and finally mm -hmm. they look at and describe structurally wage labor as slavery mm -hmm. and so that's small business term. that's yeah. right and small business in the green book yeah and small business is heavily promoted and if you go you will see everybody is doing some kind of small business here or there there are objective requirements for large-scale industry like the oil industry yeah. where wage labor is required there are and that's why I say it's transitional but there are structural protections there for workers mm -hmm. that, as I said in Harlem last week, if unions here worked for a thousand years would be proud to attain. Yeah. And in the 150 years of a union movement here have yet to attain for their workers. Good introduction to our second hour Thank coming you. up. Your pleasure as a perception, Don DeBar, a major intellectual force, if I may say so, in terms of helping to move the condition toward a very improved condition for the human condition itself. And uh, a, a, a stalwart member of the uh, uh, communications uh, community, and we thank you very much for that, Don. Thank you. Uh, we'll be coming back tomorrow. We're going to pick it up about Libya. Okay, we'll good. go on and we'll talk about that, show some clips and that sort of thing. But thanks an awful lot for all the work and everything. It's really good. It's good to have somebody who understands that private sector and the importance and whether those items of real estate understanding could begin to be applied to the national economy itself. Well,